Hello, I'm FYX Toy Cat, and Minecraft has changed, or at least your relationship with it has, because doing the same things just doesn't feel as interesting as it once did. If you're not enjoying something that you'd like to, the most important step is always to mix it up and challenge yourself, because trying the same things over and over again and expecting different results is the definition of insanity, and so today I'd like to give you some advice on breaking the mundanity, because not every day do I wake up thinking Minecraft is the best game I want to do everything with, but after challenging myself to something new, I always bring back that spark and I always have something that makes me want to play it even more and today I figured I'd share some weird challenges that I'll be pulling myself through and that you might encourage yourself to do in your very own Minecraft world. This is my 2012 Let's Play World from the Xbox 360 editions and sometimes I look around it and I think wow have I done everything there's nothing left for me to do and then I remember there are all sorts of collectibles left for me to get and so let's start on the journey to collect the most <laughs> honestly uh, elusive one of all of these because in 1.20 they added a brand new mob head. Mob heads are obtained by having charged creepers kill certain mobs, and they added the piglin mob, which last time I tried to get it, uh, ended up in my house exploding and me getting a brand new door. This is, no, no, we have to just go right now. Just charge creeper, go, just come on. Yes, no, it didn't kill him, but I died. <laughs> So let's try that right now as our first challenge of the day, get a brand new collectible. Because to be honest, Minecraft is filled to the brim with items to collect, whether it's every potion, type of armor, every single food as an example, or even just every item full stop, collecting every type of something is just a very satisfying task that Minecraft certainly knows because uh, you know the fact that they're adding new blocks every single update means that people are enjoying collecting them still. And I think the most interesting example of this was the Tales and Trails update, which added so many new collectibles that I made this giant pot in my world just to store them all in. So as you can see, I've got this lovely uh, little collection in my T09, what I don't know how it's meant to be, pot backwards I guess, um, but I've got this lovely little collection which I'm going to be storing my shards in. So this is my danger pottery shard, my heartbreak pottery shard. The ability to store these all around here is pretty wonderful, although we'll have to put them in a barrel for now I guess. Uh, the wonderful thing here is that we can collect every single pottery shard in the game and we can find the relevant place for them if that's what we want to do. Even Working out how to store them can be interesting because maybe the heartbreak, uh, you know, like a pottery shard is best done next to the creeper because he always breaks your heart when you go to hug him. Or maybe the heartbreak goes best next to the heart. Or maybe the heart goes best next to the dog because you like, you know, there's all these sorts of fun options, even on how you store things. But today, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't have a dilemma on how to store the item I want to get. I have a dilemma on collecting it because getting a charged creeper to grow up a piglin has two big problems. One of those is a charged creeper is a very rare mob. I had to wait for genuinely months for lightning to strike in this world and for me to get a charged creeper. So thank God that finally happened while I was streaming this week. But the other problem is how do I get a piglin to the charged creeper? When piglins come into the overworld, they become zombified piglins. And so getting a charged creeper to the nether seems like a bit of a challenge. And indeed, I've blown up my house over this before, but I have a slightly new strategy this time because piglins can be a bit of a nightmare when they attack on mass. I know a lot of people swear by wearing gold armor in the nether and I totally understand uh, the reasons why, especially right now. But instead, what I'm just going to do is get mad. These all, all of them have crossbows. That is a unique thing. What I'm instead going to do is kill two of them and get the other two right into this boat. And then maybe, okay, I guess he's just going to burn endlessly. Come on, come on, man. You, you should be smarter than this. I'm just saying. But assuming my guy doesn't burn to death, come on, don't trade with the armor from the other guy. You, you're better than this. Follow me. I'm, I'm mad with you. Attack me. And more importantly, get in this boat. Here's something fun about piglins, by the way. Piglins can only attack you from a minimum distance. And so this guy in the boat cannot hit me physically. Okay, this is rough. But let's just get two piglins in a boat. Or maybe one piglin in a boat. Clearly, you are not worthy of what I'm trying to do today. Okay, so that is two piglins in a boat. Problem solved, problem sorted. Now, we're going to do the slightly less burny part of this task. Oh, uh, look at this. So here is a charged creeper that lives very close to my house. My house is where my nether portal is stored, and trying to get the creeper there is what might have led to some damaging things last time. So what is the solution to this? I think the simple answer is bring the creeper to a nether portal far away from my house. It actually seems pretty obvious now that I'm saying it out loud that the easy way to avoid a charged creeper blowing up your house is just not to let the charged creeper in your house. But you know, it felt revolutionary to me when I came up with this 
this morning. Because yeah, I'm gonna take this guy to my nether portal, which is much further away by my horse farm, if he can see me. I have slightly more risk of him blowing something up along the way, but I'll be honest, if he blew up my beetroot farm, I think he'd be doing us both a favor. Okay, last stretch now, we're at the horse farm. There is a portal just over there, and the creeper will take out a lot of horses if he dies before that. So we just have to kind of get him as far away from it as possible. So even in the worst case, we'll be fine. I think this is gonna work out in my favor, but now getting a charged Cooper through a never portal, again, quite a challenge. They will blow up portals if you do it wrong. So just get on the other side, bring him through. And then most importantly, you now have a live explosive on the other side of this. In the same way that you wouldn't throw a frag grenade into a house and then knock on the door and expect to be let in, you should go very, very far, at least I don't think so. I'm not a military person. Uh, tell me if that's uh, bad advice. But instead, I'm going to uh, go to the other side of my world to a different portal, specifically specifically so I can avoid him. Which means that I end up a whopping something like 80 blocks away from the charged creeper, which is great news for me if I can find him. I hope he actually went through the portal and he's in the right place. I expect him to be just around this corner and there he is. Okay, so this is very terrifying and oh god, we've already found some piglins. They're not in the boats. Please guys, just know that you're gonna destroy my farm if you keep this up. So now we need to do the very, no, very tricky task of keeping all of these piglins and the creeper in roughly the same space. Can that be done? I don't even know, honestly. Okay, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna bring the charged creeper out of there, count, kind of counterintuitively, and into a nice big open space, which is covered in terracotta blocks. Okay, so now we've got two piglins uh, we've also got a gas, which we'll watch out for, but we've got two piglins and we've got ourselves a creeper. Now the challenge is getting the creeper to blow up both of those piglins. I think this is why the boat was the smart idea, but you know, you get the never that you get and apparently when the boat stops working, this is the new answer. So what we are going to do is hit both of these guys with a shovel at least one time. I think one time, two time, no, okay. Two shovels is all it takes to murder a piglin. One shovel, uh, that, that seems incorrect actually. Does this have sharpness on it or something? But yeah, now we're gonna go get the creeper and we're gonna try and get him as close as we can to this piglin. Or really we need more than one piglin, right? Okay, new plan, find some more piglins before the charged creeper detonates or we could just try and get him to where the existing piglins in the boat are. We might be able to do that now. I'm not really too sure because of this guy or we can just accept the single piglin head. You know, at some point you have to accept, no, this charged creeper took too much time. I can't do it for one. Okay, bad news. The piglin boat has become a single piglin in a boat. I have no idea why or why there's so many explosives happening right now. Jesus, the, the, the never is a scary place sometimes, right? Like what even is happening right here? Why is it so fiery? I don't know. I'm just gonna avoid this like the plague and get out of here back to my charge creeper. Hopefully that serves as an important reminder of how scary the never can be and how dangerous it is, uh, if you, especially when you're not fully eaten. But yeah, let's now uh, take the charge creeper and just on a little bit of a tour while we look for some piglins to throw in our boat. It's funny, all the times we didn't need piglins, we were swarmed by huge groups of them, but now we can't even find a single one. So, you know, sometimes there is a beautiful irony in Minecraft, or sometimes it's the opposite of that but we're most importantly just looking for any number of piglins anywhere near here. Okay, two piglins spawned. That is a nice number. I can add them to my previous piglin and that is going to be three of us all in one big circle. Can we get these guys weak enough that that is actually going to be murder uh, when a charge creeper gets there? I certainly hope so. So the terrain here is really uneven. One of the tricky things about the never is that in my opinion, but if we can just get these guys and okay, charge creepers in the boat now which is an interesting problem actually, um, because these guys are the ones who are gonna wanna move away from me. So we have to get them really far past the creeper. And then, wait, over here, over here, you can see me, I'm over here. I have no idea what happened to their pathfinding, but they ran away from me actively there. Uh, and now we're gonna do something really wild. No, not from here, not from here, not from here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> there is always a controlled chaos in my Let's Play world. But today, that control chaos has reached new floors. Again, now we go. 
Explosion time! Oh! I got blown up by name tag too, apparently. Let's hope my stuff survived. It wasn't what I meant when I said you should mix things up in Minecraft, but this is my first time dying in the Let's Play world in quite some time, in a, like a well over, uh, in a very, very long time. I have, it, it's very rare that you die in late game Minecraft, and doing these silly tasks where you might die, or indeed you will, sounds like a bad thing. Like you spend a lot of your life trying to avoid deaths, but when you have an actual challenge, an actual thing which might actually kill you that's when I think things are much more interesting and now I know if I was going to do this again uh, definitely keep more of a distance from the uh, from the thing there. So let's just hope none of these guys pick up my stuff. That's always the biggest nightmare. And let's hope we can put on that gold armor as soon as it's humanly possible. Please stop hitting me. Please stop. I, pl I just would like, <laughs> if it's possible, if at all possible, I would like to get my stuff in relative peace. I can't even find it. Is it is it further down there? Oh, okay. No, I can see my stuff. Pretty clearly over here, actually. So I did get piglin heads, that's the good news. And I also have some gold armor, which means no more deaths. However, there's gonna be some piglins picking over my stuff. So we probably have to be careful about that. Don't you dare, no, wait, a piglin can pick up an Elytra? <laughs> and it has my cape on it too? What? Why does, how does he have my cape on his Elytra? Did, is this a bug? Is this in, oh, okay, so you know what? A little bit of a problem uh, here, not what I was expecting, but I do have a piglin head on, which hopefully means they won't be too mad with me, or maybe it means they'll be more mad with me because I'm appropriating their culture. I don't know which way around it works. Are piglins woke? Someone let me know in the comments down below. But for now, um, let's go ahead and maybe get that set of wings back. I'm pretty sure we've got everything here that we had before. I can't find my Neverite sword, but okay, there it is. Uh, and so now the big beneficiary is the fact that we have three piglin heads. <laughs> Isn't that nice? I think it is. And we really need to track down uh, the Elytra man because he has my wings. If he dies in lava, so too does my enchanted Elytra. So I really would like to find you wherever you are. Is it you? Are you hiding it from me by sitting in a corner? It totally is him, isn't it? It totally is. No, it's not. Where where did my wings go? I had them. I've got a level with you right now. I really didn't assume that I would be spending today tracking down which piglin stole my Elytra. Um, it's just not one of those things you get to test very often. Can piglins wear uh, capes? I would have assumed the answer is no, but I would have assumed wrongly maybe. Um, yeah, where did he go to? I, I really would like to know, honestly. Okay, new strategy. We're going to slaughter all of the piglins and just assume that eventually the right guy will show up. So, uh, you've been slaughtered. You've been slaughtered. No wings on you? Any wings on you? Come on, guys. Which one of you is hiding those wings? It's got to be one of you. <laughs> oh, oh, what the heck? I had an enchanted golden apple on me and one of these guys just stole it. Okay, this is... I really, really, really do not recommend letting piglins run off of your stuff. You never know. Oh God, is it? Is it, are those Elytras gone forever? There you are, you monster! And why is it changed color? What? That is so interesting. He had my wings, but he went off into the corner, and now he's got the default cape. I wonder if we can make a. Okay, you know what? I'm too curious about this one now. So we're gonna kill you, obviously, because I I hate your guts and you stole my wings. However, I want to know something now, which is obviously they take your thing over, which means can we make a gay piglin? So this is the Progress Pride cape. Um, I I, I hear some in some circles it's a little bit controversial, and uh, now I'm going to deliberately give my wings to a piglin, and we're gonna see if the piglin uh will wear. The pride banner. You know, this is this is the answer to my question. I was joking when I said, does anyone know if piglins are woke? But we will know for sure uh, by giving him... <laughs> I don't think this is the definition of woke, but it's the best we can do in Minecraft, okay? Obviously, being LGBTQIA+, does not necessarily make you woke. It's a poor indicator, and that's uh, something to do with Monday politic discussions. However, as you can see, that is in fact a very proud piglin, Proud to try and murder me, it looks more like. Uh, however, as you can see right here, this is a piglin that has decided he is a member of the community, meaning that piglins are officially not woke, and I hope that means you're not gonna uh, steal my stuff, because that that's that's not okay either, just so you know. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do uh, the logical thing here and murder him to no, okay. <laughs> Thank God. I'm so worried that you don't, you're not guaranteed to get your stuff back. I'm gonna put my cape back on, I guess. 
enjoy the rainbow colors some more. And then we're going to go and do the second challenge because I enjoy this idea of getting weird trinklets across Minecraft. It just gives you an opportunity to do weird things like explore all the trail ruins or desert wells or indeed go to the nether with a charged creeper. I love things that challenge you to do things that are a little bit outside your comfort zone in Minecraft. However, speaking of outside my comfort zone, there's somewhere we barely ever go. And it is, of course, to go and organize my chests. I'm just kidding, this is a near impossible task, but I do like to keep some of my stuff together. I keep a lot of my rare collectibles in this one place, my illager banners, my, my, my mob heads. Uh, it's always fun to just have like a single place to collect fun things like enchanted apples. I have three of those now. I think that's a really useful collectible that if you don't believe in fit trinkets for the sake of trinkets values, even though every one of these has some use, I think enchanted apples are one of those really cool rare items that you can go and get and then they will save you from some really spicy situation at some point in your your Minecraft life. However, I am just here to grab some items that I'm going to take with me to go to the end because doing something in a brand new dimension is always a way to mix up Minecraft. You've seen how spicy the nether can be and although the end is known for being the same, I see it as the exact opposite. But yeah, let's grab some resources and go there with them. The reason I think the end is such an interesting place to come and visit is solely because of the fact that it is so different to the other two dimensions. You are guaranteed to build something unique here that you won't be able to do elsewhere. And so, for example, I mean, obviously I've got my glass covered end, but this is just laminating, you know, the dimension that already exists, right? You can do anything you want here and it stands out in an entirely different way. And so an example of this, I've uh, had a, uh, a member request for quite some time now to turn one of these end spikes into more of a, you know, an actual spike. Right now, the end spikes are actual kind of pillars and columns. Um, and so what if we made them into an actual spike, more of like a pencil design? <laughs> The answer is actually pretty terrible, although I do feel like it kind of looks like a pencil if you really squint, and if you like this idea, turn your end island into end spikes. However, there are all sorts of builds you can do, not just on top of the end islands, but also by destroying the end islands or building around them into the middle of nowhere. You can build farms here that are going to be entirely safe, like my enderman farm, or even, here's something dumb I did, because my end has two sets of end spikes because of the console to uh, bedrock transition, I actually destroyed the old console spikes, as you can see right here, um, which means that I've got these big holes in the ground. This is something you could do through the end stone if you wanted to save some time, but having giant holes through end stone is just something most people don't get to see. I think it results in some very interesting holes, and then we can take advantage of these if we want to by placing some slime blocks at the bottom. I was gonna just do this by falling down, but I was a little too terrified of dying again, and then <laughs> doing that, for example. I was a little terrified of dying again, but then losing all of my stuff in the void where it can't as easily be obtained. Also, I thought I thought I was hearing slimes, but it's placing the blocks that sounds like slimes. That makes sense, but also is terrifying. So now we've got a bunch of slime blocks placed down. We can do something pretty fun, huh? Which is, I guess, work out where on this wall we should be able to fall in. Or, yeah, we'll make a little secret entrance just over like here. Nice and low down, nice and easy to get to, and now we can use this hole to make a secret little base. I don't know how big or what the secret base will do, but let's test it works and then let's go in there. Okay, bounce, and oh, okay, so yeah, we can go a little bit higher than this if we really want to, uh, but this is a decent space for now, and now we can have ourselves a little hidey hay away from home. I think this is gonna be especially great on like a multiplayer server where maybe, you know, you just wanna have like a private space to yourself and you wanna just have a little bit of place to un unwind and relax in, maybe place some amethyst down here, and oh, isn't that beautiful? Except maybe it's not everything you want in the world. Maybe you also want to have some paintings. I brought wool, and I brought some... I I don't think I brought anything I can... Oh, yeah. we. You know what? Instead of paintings, we're going to put some redstone uh, blocks on this wool over here. Oh, isn't that nice? And then we're going to put some red wool over here, because this is the closest thing I can afford to paintings with my inventory. Oh yeah, isn't this something special? Yeah, isn't this the greatest? I think uh, more seriously though, you can do all sorts of silly things with your end. In fact, yeah, let's place slime blocks. Or actually, let's let's now replace the end stone exactly where we first found it, over here and over here. 
And now it's the secret little place that most people- and, and then let's, uh, yeah, really remove the floor even. Like, try to make it a little bit more secret. Now you can have a secret place that very few people are going to be able to access, and you can do whatever you want with it. Hide your stuff here, you can build something beautiful here, you can do whatever you want to do, and, uh, I think the fact that you've got so many choices in the end is always so fun, because it's such a different dimension that no matter what you build here, it will be unique. I personally love the vibe of using glass all the way out here, but, you know, you can do basically whatever you want, and as long as you have an Elytra, or some way to prevent yourself from maybe whoopsie falling, then you should be more than fine. Anyway, with that said, one of the fun things that I've always thought would be great out here, but I tried to make it out of court so it never worked, was the idea of making maps using the end as a backdrop, because of course it's black back there, making it very easy to do pixel art using Minecraft blocks. I switched to using snow here, it seems, which I'm not sure was such a great idea, but the idea of using, uh, you know, maps out here is such a fun one that it's actually something I've tried in the overall world, and it's a really good project idea if you want to kind of work on some different art skills. Minecraft is usually a game about 3D art, but what if it was about 2D art? Well, that's exactly what I decided to do in this particular part of my Let's Play, where I have built myself a giant house fire. This is because, if you don't know, greater than 99% of house fires have been confirmed to happen to people who don't subscribe to the IBX Toycat YouTube channel. So I figured, why not give people this important warning and show them what would happen if they didn't subscribe, and so this is what I built. It is a map art that was surprisingly involved, and this is what it looks like on a map. I really enjoy this, besides the ocean being a bit glitchy in a few places. I really, really enjoy the end result of this. You can do some beautiful things making every single block that you place down in a 2D plane into a, you know, into a lovely map which you can share with anyone you like. These can be duplicated infinitely, as you can tell from the fact that this is my 342nd map in this world. Man, I have too many of those. Um, but even more interestingly is the fact that, like, unlike all almost every other creation in Minecraft, you can store a snapshot of you building it inside the game here. You can see I built my ore house first, and my little miniature house fire and miniature house here, and then you can see my halfway point, you can see my most of the waypoint, and then you can see me adding the text later. I think this is a really, really fun thing that basically only exists because of the, you know, properties of maps. Until there is a camera block that does the exact same thing for pictures in your world, this is going to be a great alternative, and honestly, I had such a good time that there's a full live of the process if you want to see it. I had such a good time doing this as well, even though it was very intense getting the right blocks, you know, it's not just getting a uh, wood and glass, but getting this many bricks is a genuine challenge, but I think it worked out really nicely in the end, and it's the sort of thing that as soon as I was done, I was like, yeah, I could do that again, but like, I'm sure there are some ways I could do it better, and that is always a good sign in my opinion, when you finish a project and immediately think, yeah, I'm excited to do the next one, rather than, oh god, why did I do this to myself? Um, although finishing a project at all is some form of a uh, challenge, and indeed something you should reward yourself for. I rewarded myself with a sheep who now roams this island endlessly. I mean, he lost his wool to a fire. What can what can you do about it? Speaking of things you can't do, besides, I guess, not subscribe to the Toy Cat channel, after hearing about those terrible statistics, do you not care about the people you love? Um, but yeah, the next challenge you cannot do is remember to take your shulker boxes back when you do a big project like this. I was smelting up bricks literally over here, and I just forgot to take these with me. However, although inventory organization would be a challenge, it's one I would fail every time, and so instead, I figured it might be a bit more fun to build something a little closer to home and I, I literally mean that right like how how about instead of building in Minecraft abstract concepts what is what am I looking at right here? <laughs> Instead of building abstract concepts in Minecraft I think it can be uh, you know like this mountain over here which is made of deep slate instead of regular slate is regular is, is that what stone's called regular slate um, or building you know kind of big abstract minecrafty concepts I think it's very normal to see something beautiful in the real world and want to make some form of art of it Which is what I've done with this map of Great Britain honestly this 2d art is the only thing from the real world I think I've done successfully in the let's play world, which is something I wanted to change today I've made a lot of failed attempts, but I think I have a decent idea for a project and here's the scoop There is this big bridge in London lots of people like to cross over it It's one of the more famous bridges of and people know it as London Bridge, but it's called Tower Bridge, and for whatever reason, whenever I walk down that bridge, I tend to get bumped into by subscribers, so if you want to statistically run, run into me, uh, just walk down Tower Bridge, but either way, I go down this bridge a lot, and it's one of the most beautiful structures I tend to find, and so we're going to grab some uh, blocks today, and I'm going to try and make it, but with a twist. But my idea today is to do something a little bit different, because I already have something that's ugly in my world. This is my Sky Rail, which I built forever ago to connect the two halves of my world, my brick 
brick house to my cave house, what used to be the opposite ends of my Minecraft world, if only I'd known how far apart the new ends would be. But anyway, the point is to say that this is just a big stone brick building with a big wooden bridge coming out of it. And if I show you Tower Bridge from a side angle, you'll notice how it's actually not horrifically far off from what Tower Bridge looks like. What if I were to turn just a random stone structure into my world to into something which resembles the tiniest bit more something in the real world? Worst case I fail and I've just made my ugly stone structure slightly more ugly and stony, but best case I actually turn this into something deliberate. And so yeah, I feel like the best angle to look at it from is probably gonna be my house. This is my before, and now let's get to work on shaping the after. So the first things first is we're gonna have to break up this big long piece uh, by having some windows or awnings or you know something uh, going on the inside there. I don't believe in this whole let's deliberately have random blocks sticking out, but I do think we could make some nice little windows. And so wherever this side of the building is hit, we're gonna deliberately uh, kind of like carve out a three by two section. Or maybe I guess five by three might make more sense. And uh, this isn't really a window by itself. This is just a hole in the side of the building. So what we're gonna need to do with this is deliberately, um, we, we actually need a crafting table. We're gonna have to go and find a crafting table. Good news, I've just found one. There's one over here. This is why you need more crafting tables in Snap. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and craft some of that into a stone brick wall. Then we can take that exact same hole we just made, as you can see, it's kind of nice looking, and we can make it just a little bit less dull, while still very much making it clear that it's a window. I mean, from the inside, it honestly looks a bit more like a prison, uh, but if we look at this from the outside, on top of the house again, or at least nearby the house, you should be able to see from a distance that actually, yeah, that is a big improvement. Oh no, actually, I don't know that I think that that is. You know, I think confidence, though, seems to work a lot. So we're just gonna do this a second time. If you're ever unsure about something working, I tend to find the best <laughs> pro tip is just kind of overcommit to the thing. Uh, you obviously, uh, the early on days is when it's best to know if something isn't going to work, but if you're gonna go with it anyway, I think the more you make that thing work, the better it is, whereas the more you try to hide it away, oh, this is not wide enough, apparently, the more you try to hide it away, the, the worse it generally tends to be. I also think we probably should make sure these two stairs are aligned of each other. So on this particular side, we go one block from the wall, whereas on that side, we seem to have done the opposite. Actually, wait, on, on this side, it clearly works nice and aligned. What went so wrong up here? Yeah, I'm one block too far from the wall on this side. That's a embarrassing mistake, but it's fine. Whenever you make a mistake, or whenever you've got something that you're just not quite sure about, but you know that it should be right, I think overcommitting is always a good idea. When you have one of something, it looks ugly. When it starts to be a pattern, I think it tends to help quite a bit. So if we now look at this for comparison, it should look just some amount better. Yeah, look at that. There's deliberately little walls on there. Um, we could have probably had them go one block further out as well, but I think for now, that's something. It's a little bit of broken up texture, and that is something by itself. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the entrance just the tiniest bit grander. Right now, you go in via a single wide entrance, which makes sense because the staircase is over here, I guess you could say, but given that the only way I'm entering is going this way anyway, I think we should make it a little bit more grand and open. The way I'm gonna do that is by deliberately moving it over here so it'll be two blocks wide and there instead of exactly where it is now and it's going to go down like this. We're gonna just hide our previous entrance, hope no one notices it was ever there, <laughs> and uh, then instead uh, move these two slabs. One of them can go uh, just over there, the smooth stone slabs, and then we're gonna replace our current, uh, our, our stone bricks from before, place them over here, and wow, look at that, everything is wonderful. And I guess we also probably need to place some blocks there. Uh, we now have a slightly nicer way in that doesn't perfectly line up with the new staircase, but we can really easily fix that as well. Just gotta break the existing one and kind of move into it. I don't think I'm ever really going to use this structure in large part, but I think hiding, you know, like I think if it's going to face one way and have one set of functionality, it might as well do that somewhat good. And so once we're inside, we're going to just build upwards, place a stair and then build upwards. And then uh, it should just eventually connect maybe. Or we can have like a little awning sort of area, like a, you know, kind of a midway connection between these two things. Um, or we could, uh, you know, I don't like this. I, I think this is terrible. I've changed my mind midway through. I think what we should just do is have an opening and then have a staircase be over here that connects up to up there. That should be nice and simple. So stairs over there. 
easy. Stairs over here, also very easy. And then so on and so forth. And now we have easy access to the place that doesn't seem horrifically out of place. And even better, we can then make a tiny bit of an entrance uh, splash over here. I'll use some polished andesite because it looks so much like stone brick. And we just have to place a few blocks. And wow, look, now, now it's very clearly an entryway to some form of building. Doesn't need to be a lot, honestly. Maybe it does need to be a lot in your opinion. Uh, if it does, whoa, look how crazy I've gone now. Also, I realize it's not actually centered because it's got to be three blocks wide. So to play off the fact that it's not centered, <laughs> we're going to do this. There we go. Yep, that is, that is what I am sticking by as my idea. I think you'll find it is wonderful and there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. Maybe if we do that as well. Um, yeah, I think it's a bit more dignified. If you just you just ignore that it's off-center, then you'll never notice that it's off-center. So, um, yeah, now we go inwards. We've got four more stairs, which actually means it's just the perfect number of stairs to do this with. And, uh, yeah, easy access to the building means it's slightly better to climb the stairs. If you don't know, these stairs actually go all the way down to bedrock or old bedrock. No, they just go down to here, apparently, and then they, I got lazy with them. But, um, <laughs> they were meant to go all the way down to bedrock at one point. Um, this is a very, very big building on the inside, and honestly, from this side, it doesn't really matter about what's going on. There's not too much we're ever gonna see. Uh, it just matters that all of the very obvious things are dealt with, just like they are now. So, um, yeah, this is the inside of the building. It's a little bit of a weird and ugly one, but the key thing is we wanna make it look like Tower Bridge from the outside. How are we going to do that? It's not with random decorations here and there. I think it's the the big stuff that's just going to come at the top, which is why I brought my polished andesite with me, because I want to make this look a little bit more like a grand towery bridge, which is obviously going to happen up here. So I think this is my current finished kind of version of the building. I don't know why it is done like this, but it is. I'm now going to have a big polished andesite layer going one block further out from the building than this, just something from which the rest will come onto the top of. I think slightly top heavy is exactly the theme you kind of need to do, especially if we're going to have these kind of towery things coming into it. And then we're also going to remove these random blocks connecting it, because I don't know what they're doing there anyway, to be honest. And uh, just like so, we can now finish our uh, a little andesite uh, you know, ring around the outside here. It's mostly the same as, uh, you know, stone bricks. So I feel like if you ever want to add, uh, if you want to use stone bricks, but you don't want to go all the way different to like deep slate or something, you want to go for that same kind of gray tone. I find andesite is a great way to do it. And then from here, we can build upwards and make some lovely towers. So we will mostly use polished andesite for these, uh, I, I know, like corner pieces themselves. And then we'll round that into maybe some uh, stone bricks for the rest of the tower. And then from here, we just have to build upwards until we use some, um, I guess we'll use polished andesite and diorite to make just a fairly simple little tower like that. That is going to be a little miniature tower, which goes on the corners. I actually think probably all of this should be made out of andesites. We'll have to... Um, we we'll have to replace this with more of it. I, I, I think having the, the miniature pillar kind of connect doesn't really make much sense. But yeah, let's build all of these out of those. Let's build four little miniature turrets on the corners. Are they called turrets? They should be called turrets if not, because that's a cool name. And um, yeah, as you can see, that's, that's my vague plan here. And uh, so yeah, I think now um, this is my big plan. Uh, for making this into something. I think having big plans is always important because, you know, in the same way, I, 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 the reason I really like this world is that sense of progression that I have. And sometimes you get that by just looking around and being like, whoa, I did something really cool in the past. I love that giant banner. I think it's such a simple thing to add to the world, but it really is a nice little detail in my opinion. I think building a big banner version of something you have, or even a cape or whatever, um, is actually something that you can do that's a really good personalization touch to a world. And I was looking at it, thinking, like, you know, um, there are some projects that have taken way more time than that where I have less satisfaction from it. And so looking at your past and kind of analyzing like, okay, what do I feel good things from versus what do I not feel good things from is a really important way to work out what you actually want to do with your time. Um, this is a, I don't think I can do this last turret, by the way. It's gonna, <laughs> if, I, if I try to, it's gonna get uh, right in the way of this... Um, this wood which we've got right here and a lot of this wood structure I think we later can get rid of but for now we're not gonna uh, be able to do too much of that so instead just bring in this for the stone towers or for like a stone wall which will come in and connect it like this and uh, yeah eventually this will all have some nice connection but for now we'll leave the wood in place because I specifically need it to be there and uh, the only thing we really need to worry about is what's gonna go in the very center of all three of these so using just three towers we can work out that the middle of these two from 21 
over to what would be 35, 21, 35, that's 28 is the middle. So this is the middle of the structure this way. And then if it's 26 on this andesite, and then it's 20, 26 on this andesite, 20, 21. This is the exact center of the tower. We're going to stack ourselves up. Oh wait, this is the exact center of the tower. We're gonna stack ourselves up over here and we're gonna make a big central tower nicely over here that the rest can connect into however we want. I think if I recall how the regular tower bridge works, there is a big gold monument at the top like this. Just, you know, they're kind of showing off how fancy they are. So we're going to do precisely that, looking over at the side. Let's go back and let's look at our tower. It's coming together somewhat nicely, right? We've changed it substantially. Um, and uh, now the bridge that's coming off it doesn't look like a random thing coming from a tower. It's starting to look like it's deliberately coming from inside this building, which is something we'll be able to help even more after we've got this main tower done. So, um, yeah, I'm going to use some gold. It is very rare you get to use gold for building purposes, but I have uh, been collecting a fair few bits of it. And I'll just grab half a stack and see how much we end up using and return the rest after we obviously quickly put some uh, never warts in here. I have a big messy inventory right now, but it's it's fine. This is, this is what happens when you do a lot of projects. As long as you spend some time organizing it later, you'll be fine. But let's go back to the top of this. And let's quickly, uh, you know, build the very, very, very top of this lovely thing. So, um, yeah, if polished diorite is the usual fancy resource, the one we've been using for the rest of it, I think we'll start with just some of that. I guess we're going to place on top of here. We'll start with just a nice five-wide ring of polished diorite going around the center. This, um, th this is going to be... Uh, just, you know, something. Oh, we do not have enough to do that. Uh, we're going to start with a nice polished ring of diorite and then realize we don't have enough blocks. And so take away the corners and take away this. And that should just about solve my problems, right? I've got three blocks left. There's three blocks over here. I've got one more block of diorite that I need. So we, this is, this is what I like to call tactical substitution. You take the least likely block to be seen <laughs> and you replace it with something which looks basically the same. And if anyone ever spots it, you say it's a deliberate detail and uh, you totally wanted it that way. And now what we do is we finish the top of this off with some gold. This is gonna be a real nice gold uh, pillar at the top. And yeah, it's gonna look super fancy because the rest of the tower is so gray with only you know light gray and white touches. So having a big gold tower at the top it's going to come across especially nice. Maybe one block lower than that. Um, but having a big golden tower is going to be a real nice topping to what is already, in my opinion, quite a nice thing by itself. Then what we can do is we can obviously um, kind of build, build around with the stone bricks from the corners. So we're going to make some stone bricks. And we're going to just work out how to do that in, in, in any somewhat nice way. This wood is kind of getting in my way. And honestly, I could, given that this tower is now going to be an inside place, I might as well take what is a really overcomplicated <laughs> rail setup and make this go inside, right? In the same way that over here I've done it on one layer without having to do anything too crazy, why not just do the same over here? Okay, I've got to admit, that felt like sacrilege. That is one of the oldest parts of my world. And, uh, you know, the fact that it wasn't efficient rails and it wasn't efficient really anything, that doesn't change the fact that it really did feel like, yeah, this was a historic part of the world. It was something uh, that had existed forever. Uh, you know, and it just it has a very special weird place. It's it's odd how we have attachments to things like that But um, yeah, this was one of my first ever ways of doing redstone and now we're doing minecart tracks And now it's kind of gone, but it's an important thing to be gone Now what we're gonna do is we're going to use uh, some wood over here to kind of deliberately move everything one block left Just so there's less stuff happening here So um, yeah, what we're gonna do is take some of this rail which we've now picked up some off and uh, kind of bridge it along here This is very easy you would hope um, um, and then this minecart track is going to go nicely over here, right next to the existing one. And then at some point, all we need is a single button to turn this track in the right way. This is, um, it's going to work exactly how the old one did, I hope, maybe. Honestly, even this needs to probably be moved inwards. I bet I can move this entire thing all the way over here. And so let's try precisely that. Let's see if we can't move uh, this block inwards and across there. And then this can be the outward route. So yeah, actually, let's let's try that. Let's instead of doing what I'm doing here, let's have the entire thing uh, go straight um, across to this, and then we'll we'll even be able to remove all of this and have that last tower turret that we actually need over here. So um, yeah, we're now going to destroy even more old parts of the world, but they need to go. They're sticking over the edge anyway. They didn't make sense when I built them. It's weird to do, 
But I think, uh, you know, sometimes if you're destroying old things for the sake of destroying them, it's never good. If you're destroying old things for the sake of making the same thing, but very slightly better, you know, the same soul but improved, I think I'm all for that. There's a... There's a really weird line in the, you know, in spaces of people who like uh, technological development, or really like development of any form. Like, there are people all around the world, basically, who don't really like um, to see things from their past gone. They are preservationists, or, you know, sometimes you might say conservative <laughs> in, uh, in various ways. But, um... There are, there are people who are very preservation heavy. They, they like the idea of things that they uh, used to know being preserved for as long as they can be. Okay, so we'll just have two rails here running side by side. I shouldn't have done that. Um, so we'll have this rail go to the side just so it doesn't get interfered with there. And then we'll have a whole sideways rail going here. And now this simple rail will change uh, path based on whether the button is pressed or not. When the button is pressed, it goes straight. When the button's not pressed, I guess this kind of does the same thing that I wanted it to anyway. Like the rail, you place a minecart track on it and depending on which way around you're going, it takes you to the right place. I think it's hard to reverse without having to get off entirely, but I think we've accidentally done exactly what we were aiming for already. With just one little exception being this part. How do we connect this to either go back round on ourselves or to do that? Oh yeah, this is confusing, huh? This is <laughs> there's a there's a lot of uh, moving parts in this. So I think what we do is we would have a button over here instead of over there. Yeah, we we take the, this button instead of that button. Uh, let's do that. And now, uh, wait, we want to put it on the on the junction here. Now the junction will change. No, what? That, oh, okay. So yeah, the junction. The junction either goes forwards or it... Oh, okay, we are... <laughs> yeah, the junction... Uh, by default, it loops you round, which is interesting. Or if you want to go forwards, you press the button. It's interesting you can't have that work by reverse by default, but there's a weird bias in minecart systems. But yeah, we can link the two systems up, but by default, it will loop you round here. Which is bad, actually. So, you know, this, this is close enough to what we had before. <laughs> it does the same things just about. With a little weird exception. But now let's break the glass from before. Let's break this. And then go pick up all the pieces. Because let's be honest. Uh, we have now significantly improved at least a few things here. We just have to pick up the pieces and make it all work and then make the outside hide the interior a little bit better so it feels more like a grand building with a bridge inside of it than just a random building with some tower stuff floating on top of it. So um, yeah, coming down here, nice and simply, taking a lot of damage apparently, you can see there's a sheep just randomly trapped in a hole. I don't know why I put the sheep in the hole. Was I trying to start a sheep farm and just got lazy or is there something special about this sheep? There's got to be something in it, but not my not my job to care about it today. And then we're going to go back up there with some more andesite and some more diorite and finish up our tower. Honestly, from the outside, it doesn't look so bad, but I think this top spike needs to be way higher because from this angle, it honestly looks like nothing. It doesn't look like a grand tower on top of other towers. It looks like there's just a tower back there that's slightly taller. So I'll raise that by about five blocks and uh, also make this fourth tower, which is just oddly conspicuously missing right now, should be nice and easy to do. Yeah, this is way too low. Something I probably should have expected, but apparently did not. And so yeah, let's now uh, build these corner towers here. And also I think the connection between these towers is just kind of ugly from the outside. I think we shouldn't do uh, what we've done over here. It just doesn't seem to work. So I think we'll move in uh, inwards much earlier and that should help with some of the vibe. Maybe, or maybe it doesn't at all. We'll find out. Um, right after we build another one over here, connecting this over to my new tower that's coming here. So, um, yeah, I do have to, uh, confess, I need some diorite to top this tower off with, and, um, I, w you know, I looked for some in my chest, and I just, uh, didn't find it, but I'm a big believer in, like, why, why spend, like, minutes of your life trying to find literally a single block when you can find a good alternative without having to do that, and so, uh, you better believe that I might have just gone ahead and found myself an alternative. What is the alternative, you might be asking? A random block of prismarine. I feel like this is a real good one because it, look, look at that, it kind of works, right? And so now we can even uh, take this block, turn it into prismarine too, and it'll add a tiny bit to that slightly blue color scheme, which we all are going for. 
by accident or not. And um, yeah, then we can probably place some of this on the tower leading up to the, uh, the the gold, I think, which would be real nice. But for now, let's break the entire thing, admit that it's a flawless idea that only was <laughs> only ruined by its execution of height. Sometimes it sucks when you have to you know, re destroy something you've built just to move it slightly higher. It feels like there should be like a raise this all up option. Which I guess would be pistons. Uh, a lot of pistons, maybe. Um, you know, I, I think Minecraft would do really well from having like a 5x5 five five piston, right? Like imagine a piston uh, where you can just place an entire build, even more than 5x5 five five even. Um, just move it up slightly. That would be incredible. I'm, I'm just saying, if you need... You, you want to do that idea, Mojang? The uh, it's, it's free. You can have it on me. So we need to move these stairs now a little bit because they are being uh, stopped. And we'll move them over to here. So staircase goes there. Staircase goes here. And then staircases go over here. Nice and simple. Nice and easy. Everything uh, that seems complicated probably has an easy fix in there somewhere, I bet. And um, yeah, we probably also want to put some more powered rails down. Uh, I don't think they're necessary, I just think they're fun. <laughs> and also I have them on me anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I, I guess we should also place some more of these just randomly on the stretches of this. Yeah, we, we, we have spare powered rail, right? Let's place it down and then allow future me to work out what he wants to do with it. So, um, yeah, the... I think this is a stretch that could probably do with some powered rail. But, you know, for now, moving slow on this might help with working out what's happening where. Because there's a lot of moving minecart pieces that cause confusing things to happen. Okay, so, um, yeah, we've now finished these uh, corners. We just have to build this way higher up. I said five blocks minimum. We'll go six blocks, and then we'll start building the exact same thing. Working out how it's going to connect to the rest is obviously going to be a later concern. And so that's precisely how we're going to treat it. So polished diorite goes on all four sides. I can now not use that lazy corner piece because I used... Uh, you know, so by being lazy elsewhere, I've now, no wait, I just, I lost the diorite. I'm, I, I could, you know, I could go two minutes back for it, but who wants to do that internet? <laughs> but, um, yeah, so something, uh, okay, we're gonna break this now. Please give it back to me. No, we didn't. We have to go down there. I think, uh, something, uh, I, I've been thinking about is this whole, like, what is worth preserving and what is not worth preserving is a really interesting debate to have because so many things are, are assumed to be not worth preserving until someone needs them and it's like, yeah, it's it's too late now. We, we already basically decided by accident, by proxy, that we don't care about this thing and now it doesn't exist anymore to be preserved. And uh, this, this need to preserve things we care about is a really human instinct that has good purpose too, right? Like, the preserving things we care about is basically all we do as uh, people. Our very best things at the very least, whether it's, uh, you know, raising other human beings or whether it's, uh, uh, you know, just even even something much more simple, like uh, really liking something, so recommending it to a friend, so that thing, you know, can do better. I, I think uh, the instinct to preserve things that we care about is one of our great instincts. It's something I really will stick by. But um, sometimes we have an overprotective instinct to be like, no, we that, that thing can't change at all. If it changes, it's ruined, I tell you. And I think um, knowing where the line is between, also please tell me we've got some regular stone in here. Nope, why do I have this shulker box at all? What is the point of bringing this with me? But um, <laughs> um, yeah, the, 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 the line on when some preserving something becomes artificially creating something is kind of weird, right? Because if you think about it, anytime you preserve something, you're in effect making something new. You're not actually keeping something the way it used to be. And to give an example of how that is, let's say, uh, you know, when um, when Sprite brings out their brand new, or is it Mountain Dew? Or the, There's a few sodas in the United States that are like, yeah, we're using cane sugar again. It's a throwback to how it used to be. But it's obviously not the exact same product. It's just doing something in a similar way to how it was done in the past. Or, um, and you know, that's, that's, all, no, no one's looking at that beyond the wow, Toy Cat. I didn't realize that they weren't bringing bottles from the 1960s. Um, but what might surprise you is that, I guess, now I'm going to remove all of this. I think the wood is just worth not having there. And then we'll move the redstone torch onto the outside of this. I don't know if that works correctly necessarily. It doesn't. So we'll now move the redstone torch over here, which is a little bit uglier, 
Uh, but it's the best we've got for now, and we we don't really need to do much else otherwise. We'll also put a redstone torch over there, and a redstone torch over there. Just, you know, we've got them. They need to go somewhere. And uh, now this represents like a way in and out of the building, so I guess I can be grateful for that. And uh, already you can see there's a nice improvement, but we still need a way to link these towers up to that main one. And so we'll just place a bunch of stone going downwards to hopefully make it look like it connects. Um, that is the key concern here. Does it look like it connects? If it does, we're in good time. But yeah, when, when uh, like if I build something from, you know, hypothetically, right? If I was to build my oldest build from my old Let's Play, I, I showed it off recently, a lot of people seem to like it. It was in my, we all used to build these uh, Minecraft change because of us but a video. Um, but in that video, I show off my very first house from a video. And if I was to rebuild that today, if anyone was to rebuild that today, I would build it differently. The idea, um, you know, if, uh, the, the idea of building a house out of stairs would be done very differently. And so to truly preserve the idea, you'd have to change the form. If you, but if you, and if you preserve the form, you're kind of warping the idea. You change the idea from what if you were to build a, you know, a, a thing out of stairs to what if you were to build a thing out of, um, you know, build a house that looks like stairs that also only uses blocks that were possible in 2012. Um, and you know, like that, that seems like a small thing, but as time changes and as the surroundings and the context for something changes, that actually does become a very big difference. Also, did I lose a bunch of gold blocks or something? I swear I had more than just one at the top here, but yet I don't know where the rest are. Maybe, um, I did something like this, where it's just the corners. We'll assume that I did that for now, and then later if we find the gold, we'll place it in there. Because this, you know, that's fine. This this looks odd. <laughs> this looks very odd. Um, but it's mostly pretty fine, I think. So um, now we'll just have one more ring going all the way around this, but on the outside properly, including going inwards for these corners. And um, we'll remove this whole tower coming out from under it because it's kind of unnecessary. Just gets in the way of existing stuff. Using that to finish out this ring. And, uh, oh, yeah, this... Now we realize we can't go any blocks lower because the minecart is there. It seems very silly, you might say, but the end result is maybe that we have a tower bridge. I will have to go see how that looks from the outside to be the judge. Okay, so my plan here, when I destroyed this historic artifact, was to make it look more like tower bridge. I'd argue we kind of succeeded. We made something a lot weirder in the process. <laughs> Um, but you know, this is uh, maybe a reminder of why I don't build things in the real world. You can see it didn't, it, it's, it's not looking like a one-to-one -one copy, is it? If I, if I have to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, I think uh, the idea of building something you do love from the real world is interesting. But just know you're not making a copy and extending it. You're making a new thing from it. You're, you're building something brand new that might even outlast the original. And that's kind of okay because all ideas get warped and changed and change as the things that their surrounding change. Because when this was built, this whole area was basically empty, but then I built the metro down next to it, and I built this big potion, uh, you know, like a never warp farm over here. And uh, so yeah, and, and then I went fishing for several hours here, which means I have chests full of just fishing stuff that sit right here. Uh, the context around something is always changing in ways that I think are kind of interesting and almost compelling to look at. Anyway, speaking of things that are compelling to look at and interesting, I would like to move on to the fifth challenge now because I I don't know that I, I've i built a tower bridge. All we have to do is come in there with some cyan wool and I think we can kind of bring it back to that royal color uh, for which it is known. It's, it's known for that fun royal color, by the way, even though I think it was painted that way in like 2002 or something. Uh, ridiculously recent, but yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead. Let's place the sign wall up there and just see if we can't save this the tiniest bit You know challenge four might be complete, but I think I can do a Slightly better job by either placing it on the outside here or replacing this Yeah, you know, we'll just replace the wood while it's running on the inside here with a lovely bit of cyan wool nice and simple nice and easy um, maybe we should replace the bottom bits a bit too. I'm not sure. Um, we'll of course place our torch back on because it'd be silly to, uh, not do that. And then we can even, I guess, replace the bit that has nothing there. And then maybe even go a couple of blocks further out. Cyan wall, cyan wall. And then choose to do the same on the other side too. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's really, really, really stick to this idea. And let's have cyan wall going all the way over here. Right up to where the redstone torch exists. Although we can go a block further. Move the redstone torch one block 
and then make this all match a bit better. So redstone torch goes here, kind of, and then another redstone torch goes over here, kind of. And uh, now that should help with things feeling just a little bit more, uh, you know, we've, we probably want to remove these blocks as well. Although we could probably place these on the outside of that. And then the same over here, we just place uh, some cyan wool on the outside of it. And we'll see if that gives it that tiny little nudge in the right direction. Yeah, that's, it's beautiful. We've done it as good as anyone can do it. The, the sky rail is officially just a really long extended version of Tower Bridge. And this, <laughs> I actually like it. I don't know why. I don't know what is wrong with me. I think that's the fun thing about Minecraft is sometimes you can look at something awful that everyone else is like, yeah, it's pretty good. And sometimes it's the entire reverse. You are looking at something that you think is beautiful and the whole internet goes, oh, why? Can you, you you're joking, right? You must be trolling. But I think that's the fun thing about Minecraft. Anyway, the most fun thing about Minecraft is, um, I, I want to I want to level with you here. There are a lot of unfinished projects in this world, and some people say sometimes, like, oh man, so you, can't, you have the most unfinished projects, but also other people say, how do you stick to the same world after 11 years? And the easiest way for me, the simplest tip I would say that helps out the most is genuinely don't finish all of your projects. If you start a project and the idea of coming back to that project makes you not want to play Minecraft, then you shouldn't come back to the project. I think uh, the most important thing you can learn is the value of uh, listening to yourself. And although I'm going to say finishing your project is the fifth challenge here, take a, take anything in your world that you haven't finished and just do it. It will give you some real good feelings when you do it. But I would also say the, the real advice here, this is true for so many things in life. Listen to your body or listen to your mind. When you are telling yourself something, when you are saying, I don't want to do that, don't try and say to yourself, no, I really want to do it and I'm just lying to myself. Because, although sometimes you can push through and you can do some really good stuff with that, if you try to force yourself to do something you don't want to, you'll start procrastinating. If you try to force yourself to do something you don't want to, or you don't see value in, uh, you'll- oh, Man, I've got- I pray- I must have so much Nevrak lying around here, huh? If you try to force yourself to do things you don't want to do, then you'll end up very quickly, uh, even, you know, like just, uh, coming up with reasons not to do it, doing a really poor job, and wasting time that could be spent doing things you actually care about. I think that can combined with having a sense of progression. Can you can you remember what this used to look like before I covered it in Neverack? It's crazy how much it's changed, huh? But um, having that and a real sense of progression is really important to combine together because then you can actually reward yourself for doing something with better and better feels and views. This place is getting higher and higher walls every time I come here. It's kind of wild, right? And uh, yeah, I've got Lots of shulker boxes I need to use up. So uh, guess what? We've got a live stream coming this week because right now I can't bring myself to finish this entire project. It is going to take about 100,000 more Neverack blocks and it's just, it's a lot that I'm going to have to go through. And so you can watch me stream that for hours on end soon. But the actual fifth challenge is going to be to create a path somewhere because the Tales and Trails update just came out. And so you need to make trails across your Minecraft world. Okay, I don't think that's a good idea either. My next challenge is a really simple one that honestly I come back to in any Minecraft world when I'm just kind of feeling like flat on ideas and I don't necessarily want to be creative. I just want to play the block game and get some blocks from which I can later choose to be creative with. And that is why I love to clear out a big flat layer. Here you can see my mine is about three blocks tall and uh, God knows like 100 by 100 wide in each direction going all the way from my sugarcane farm, my dripstone farm. And it's really cool to see see this far down here and honestly this is only a few hours of work here and there if you really just sit there and power through and doing some stuff I recommend listening to podcasts or maybe YouTube videos while you do it you can make some impossibly flat lands or huge caves and I think this is great because this is one of the best ways to do it do it in a big horizontal direction but you can also do it vertically if you want to right one of my most popular concepts back from the Xbox 360 days of Minecraft was digging out an entire chunk this is technically two chunks dug out all the way from here on the surface down to the old bedrock layer and it's really cool to just see a vertical slice of your world something that is just so satisfying and doesn't take much thought. Also what is with that? That is a very odd 
Uh, interesting issue there, huh? <laughs> I wonder why that happens. Anyway, so uh, ignoring the weird rendering issues you might uncover because of course we're playing Bedrock now, uh, and so you, you're just gonna run into things like that. What if we were to apply this same approach to basically any underground structure? Well, I have one in mind. Recently, I went diamond mining for several hours, which means I uncovered entirely new parts of my world that I just never really uh, explored or came into contact with before. And one of the more interesting things is that while going this way, I very quickly ran ran into not just a amethyst geode, which is interesting by itself, by the way, like just a, uh, well, while casually mining, right, I, I ran into a bunch of lava patches, stuff you'd expect, but then just up the road here, there is an amethyst geode. This to me is a good example of something that could be uncovered, because they're so pretty and blah 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 blah, however, because it's kind of not really an open structure, to mine out the ceiling, you have to destroy some of these blocks, it's not the ideal structure for it, however, a mob spawner on the other hand is basically basically perfect for it. They don't already have roofs. I mean, it's basically begging you to just dig this all the way up to the surface. And so, you know, if the game is politely begging me, why don't we go ahead and do that? I think the first thing you've got to do is you've got to make a big staircase round this. So this can be our three by three hole by for now. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to make a little hole going upwards into it using, I guess, some of these very same blocks or, you know, we'll use, we'll use some redstone for it just as a nice reminder. I've been picking this up as I go because I really like redstone. It's a lovely, uh, block that causes some funny things and let's dig uh, Let's make ourselves a staircase all the way up to the surface using it when I say using it I obviously mean just making a staircase through uh, the dirt just like this or through whatever we're gonna be finding and roll Whoa right up into another cave. That's very interesting I think technically although these caves make it a bit more annoying for my route They're actually gonna save me a lot of effort So, you know, I'll take these caves when they need to exist and we'll just power right through it into the next thing uh, uh, all the way to the surface we must go, and it will be a big journey, but it's one that I just have to know, because what will it look like from the top? Worst case, right, you just have a random hole in the ground, but best case, it looks like the coolest zombie spawner that anyone has ever seen. That is my goal here, and I think, honestly, having a big goal is the important thing about Minecraft. Like, loading up into the game and being like, I have this vague idea of something that is fun, and I don't really know how to go about doing it, let alone how I want to go about doing it, I think that is a bad way to approach any task. You need to approach basically everything with what you actually want out of it. I think uh, it can be really easy to just like stop measuring yourself and stop looking at things and just being like, yeah, things are great. I I, I do this with, um, you know, weight sometimes. Like if I'm going through a particularly, you know, like uh, I, I, I think sometimes I, I, I overeat. I really, really enjoy food. It's one of my favorite things. And so, you know, sometimes if I'm like eating too much, I'll be like, yeah, there's no point in like weighing myself because like I'm sure it doesn't change too much. Or, um, you know, sometimes when I'm doing really good positive things, like really good high exercise days, etc. I'll be like, wow, I can't believe my weight didn't change. Therefore, it's all outside my control. There's no point caring about any of it anyway. And just getting uh, like defeatist about the whole thing. It's see, it's it's a logical reaction. I, I totally understand why something feeling outside your control makes you want to just say, yeah, it's 100% outside my control. But also it's one of the worst things you can do because as soon as you stop caring and you stop measuring and you start saying, yeah, there's, there's no need for this anymore. It stops mattering. As soon as you look at your mind, Minecraft world and say, yeah, it'll never really be great anyway. I, I I don't really care about anything in there. You'll stop, you know, once you once you stop caring about things, you'll stop enjoying them as much. And I think this is a really crucial lesson to learn with stuff like this, that ultimately um, what you get from your Minecraft world is exactly what you want to get. Um, if you if you have to go and if you have to do some things um, that you you know other people might not find as fun, if you have to make houses that other people think are ugly, or you have to build things that other people think are weird, it does doesn't matter. You are the one who gets to decide whether what you do is weird or fun or great or terrible. And I think that's a, uh, a valuable reminder, especially for people out there who are maybe in situations where you feel very heavily peer pressure to be a certain way. You don't need to follow that. You get to be the one who decides what it is to be a person. And there are some people who will try and tell you you have to be exactly like them, uh, but they're not being like themselves. They're being exactly like the people who pressured them to be like themselves. And ultimately, it's just a big cycle all the way around. And so anyway, the, the important thing about Minecraft uh, to keep in mind is that having uh, just some fun idea and following it to the end because you want to see where it goes is how I spend some of my most fun times in Minecraft. Oh God. Um, that's how some of my most fun times in Minecraft have been spent. Oh, I think we lost a, we lost a pretty valuable block there, I think. Um, 
but yeah, that's how some of the most valuable time in Minecraft can be spent. Okay, so now we're gonna uh, place some blocks over there. This is really risky, but it is working out in my favor, thankfully. Um, now we can remove the block above my head, and then another block over here, and I'm gonna be real careful about lava from now on, although place some blocks over there, place some blocks over there, and run away from the lava. Oh, no, 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 not again, not again, not again. Ooh, okay. That is a little bit closer for <laughs> than I would like to be. Um, I still might die, technically, but thankfully we did not. Uh, one, two, three, four. We can now just straight mine this way and deal with the lava later. Oh, no, we can't. Oh, no, we can't. Um, there we go. Perfectly gone. So this is one and a two and a three and a four. Perfect. And we just have to keep on mining up to the surface. This is a useful reminder, maybe, by the way, that when you're doing one of these projects, it is a really big way up. But in fact, when when you're making a big horizontal slice, it's a big chunk of Minecraft. But seeing that you make that impact on the world is one of the most valuable things you can do for yourself. Seeing that you are not powerless in this world is one of the things that makes Minecraft great because in, you know, in the real world there are people who tell you non-stop that you are worthless, that you aren't, uh, you know, like, able to do anything and you don't matter and stuff. Um, but, you know, and, and, you know, like, the fact that you're making an impact every day is something you'll convince yourself you're not. Like me, uh, when I've, uh, you know, had, uh, when I've had a few really good exercise days, I'll be like, ah, they don't really count. I mean, everyone's doing exercise every way. Or, you know, even, even with spending, this is one of the worst habits to get into. I think during the pandemic, I got really bad into this. I think there's a lot of bad habits people developed during those few years because of, uh, <laughs> may, may, maybe mental health went to an all-time I'm low. Who knows for sure why or how that happened, but um, because of the uh, be because of the pandemic, one of the things I just got really bad with was spending. I one of one of the worst things you can do with money is just pretend that it comes and it goes, and you just you just gotta you know like see when it happens and uh, like hope for the best. That might work if you have millionaire parents or you have a really great support system where genuinely, if you run out of money, just someone helps you and gives you more. In that case, I'm really envious of you, and please could I have some. Um, but assuming you aren't in that situation, the, the most important thing to do is just track your spending and have a vague idea of what you're spending where. Not just, okay, so there's there was water above me, but there's not water over here, which makes me confused as to where I am. Is there a water pit nearby, or am I on a beach? It could be either of those two things, I guess. Um, but yeah, the, the important thing... Uh, to keep in mind, I would say, 100% the most important thing is um, that, uh, like, uh, just having a, a good idea of how, what you're doing with your time or your money is important. Um, if you waste something by not even knowing you have it, if you, uh, you know, like, uh, in the same way that when you don't want to do something, you can really, really get good at tricking yourself not to do it by procrastinating and doing other tasks, and then you waste the time because you don't feel like you've spent it in a way you enjoy. You can do the same with money by being like, yeah, well, I'll, I'll just spend a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there, and then all of the money is gone. You don't get to choose the valuable priorities you're going to spend it on. This is one of the most important things is being able to like choose what you get to spend money on, basically. And um, that's, that's why I think that... Oh, so we're going to have a big pile of blocks just falling down into the ground. They might hit that lava pool from earlier if we're unlucky, and we might just lose them all. But let's let's hope not, huh? Let's really hope not. Um, yeah, one of the most important things you can do is just, like, keeping track of what you're doing. And, uh, you know, even if, even if that means making some bad calls, knowing that they're bad calls and giving yourself an allowance to do them, rather than pretending that it's great and everything's wonderful, or rather than pretending everything is awful and you've never done anything good, because, you know, people can... Uh, people, uh, have you ever seen, like, uh, I, I, there's a show I, I, I relearned about recently called Super Size, Super Skinny, and it's people with eating disorders on both ends of the spectrum who switch diets, so people who are eating too much, they have to eat the diet of someone who's anorexic, and vice versa, and it's a reminder that both of those people probably see themselves as, like, eating a fine amount most days, right? No, no, most people who have a problem with anything, you know, whether it be uh, drugs or Minecraft, <laughs> man, all those people with Minecraft problems, it's terrible. But uh, most people who have a problem with something or other probably don't think of it as a problem most days. If you've ever uh, spoke to a smoker, you can, you, you know what I mean by this, like, you know, this is a bad addictive habit, but they're like, yeah, it's not actually, you know, really that bad, and it's, it's, it's actually, there's health benefits to it, or, you know, the same with basically any negative trait. It's much easier to just tell yourself, like, ah, it's all fine, there's, there's no problems with it all. Because that's a, a really easy uh, message to have and to sell, etc. However, what's much harder is to actually sit down with yourself and be like, yeah, actually, 
this this is hard and this is why. If you tell yourself why something is bad, you'll start to not want to do it, which for things that you're like, you know, maybe physically addicted to, or you know, it's, I, I feel like genuinely I must be addicted to procrastination. It's the only way to describe how some of my days go, where I'm like desperately trying to do something and it's just like, nah, what if you didn't? And then five minutes later, I'm like, I still need to do the thing. And the brain's like, ah, well, what if you check this instead? Um, chasing dopamine day to day, hour to hour, Seems like it's a good way to live life. Um, but having a good idea of what you want to do, giving yourself allowances and breaks, and knowing when to be strict and when to be firm. It's it's kind of like, I always like to describe it as being a good parent to yourself. That's what you need to be able to do. And uh, yeah, hopefully this is a guide not only to how to be less, you know, how to not be bored of Minecraft and to enjoy it some more, but also a guide on how to better, uh, you know, like uh, be strict or not strict of yourself. Um, because being, you know, like, I, I don't know, I feel like if you, I, I'm at the same age now that, like, my mother would have been when I was, like, eight. I, I grew up in a, a single uh, parent household. Uh, I, I feel like that's the norm. I genuinely, it blows my mind that people have two parents. Like, ah, oh, man, that's, that's gotta be weird. What happens when they contradict each other? Like, does, does one of them give you money and, and then the other one can take it away from you? Or, like, you know, like, is it the same person? Do you have, uh, you, you know, like, everyone has... Uh, something like that, right? Surely they, they must do. There's gonna be some weird dynamics happening there. Um, but yeah, it's it's weird to me. You 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 hear you, you must have some really weird lives if you have this you know two parents in there. Like, how's that possibly gonna work? But one of the weird dynamic parts of it is like, yeah, um, the age that my the the one person who raised me was um, like is the same age of the I. The same age I am now is the age my parent would have been when I was, like, 10. So, like, able to observe what they were doing and, like, seeing it. And, like, thinking back to, like, yeah, they they had a lot of the same problems I had. Being, like, some days just, like, can't do anything. Some days, uh, you know, just watching some, some casual TV about people buying houses in the country or whatever else. And, um... Just something about that, like, kind of breaks my mind that, like, man, I have barely any idea of how I'd raise a child effectively. Like, it doesn't seem like something I can do. Um, but yet, yeah, it's something that someone did do, not just for any child, but, like, for me. Also, those iron ores are the ones I'm most gonna miss if they, uh, go away, so I'm really hoping we can make it down to bedrock before this all goes. But there's just a lot of blocks, and I think they're slowly disappearing as they hit the five minute timer. So, we're gonna have to hope. We're gonna have to be very, very hopeful, I think. Um, <laughs> or we, we could probably throw more blocks on the ground, just like kind of uh, drop blocks over and over again. And just like, now the five minute timer has been reset on all of the blocks. That might be more useful. Or oh, actually, yeah, we can throw them all in the center too, which might work out handily for me. Is this a good idea? I don't know, honestly. I'm just kind of doing it and seeing what happens. Um, but yeah, the, uh, so, sorry, to, to, to take a little uh, diversion. This, this is the long cut part of the video. Something a lot of people uh, miss in the modern age of everything being hyper-engaging content is just a genuine long conversation. Just being able to have no, no crazy cuts every 10 seconds to be like, whoa, here's a crazy thing. Which I'll admit that is the standard for getting anyone new on the internet to watch your stuff. There is a, um, you know, that, that's, that's a big important thing. Thing. But I also want to say that like I enjoy just having like a real genuine style conversation Which is why I like to do this things uh, and so th this is another let's play That's kind of like the hybrid format of super fast important challenges mixed in with all of that later Let me know if you enjoy it, but the um the, the other thing I want to kind of say about this, while we're here anyway uh, doing it, is that it isn't something that necessarily works on a purely commercial basis. And to, if anyone is out there and you're enjoying this sort of stuff and you want to see more Let's Plays like this, and indeed live streams, which are a similar idea, uh, I would really appreciate becoming a channel member. I, this is something uh, which is a great way to support any YouTuber you watch across anywhere on this site. Uh, being a channel member is a way to give a monthly contribution that means that instead of being reliant on ad revenue, which is entirely just based on how many clicks a thing can get and the number of clicks something can get is based on the watch time and average uh, you know like impre it, there's a lot of science that goes into it that basically means you have to have the snappiest most engaging content possible even outros are something that youtubers try to uh, like not do specifically because it takes away 10 seconds from your engagement if someone skips that like the, the that's where intros went on YouTube that's why so many videos start in the middle of a sentence it's all about just maximizing uh, what percentage of a video you watch not giving you the most value from a video just maximizing the percentage that they can say that you've watched so that YouTube will show their video to more people. And I understand that that is the best business strategy and I should 
you know, be working on it for that level. But I also want to have stuff like this and the live stream playthroughs and uh, the long, you know, the long challenges and survival projects and stuff. I want to have stuff like this still exist. And so if you agree with that and you want it to, uh, I would really appreciate becoming a channel member. I, I appreciate people who tip on streams too. It's super important. But a membership is like a reliable uh, monthly thing. It's something uh, that I think is a great way for people who don't, who do agree that not everything should be based on uh, robot algorithms that are based on people trying to appeal to them, and instead can be more genuine and human. If you do enjoy that, that that's that's great. If you don't, that's wonderful too. But I, I think it's at least worth looking. G give the membership options a look. If you if you don't want one, that's fine. But if you gave it a look, that's something I would massively appreciate. Speaking of something I'd massively appreciate. Um, something, uh, kind of, uh, weird, right, is, um, recently on the channel, I've been trying to, uh, I, I, I've come to this conclusion that, like, Minecraft is this space that is very, 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 I wouldn't say overfilled, but it's on the, uh, way down from the perspective, not of the number of total views, but on the fact that there are so many people who want to make Minecraft videos in a certain style, and only so many people who want to watch that certain style of Minecraft video. Like, that. let's be honest, everyone wants to have this, this dream thing of, like, I will share my world and do, do a certain thing. It's like a very, very popular format. Um, for YouTube, and uh, I, I think that's actually wonderful. I think the more people who share what they do, the better we all get as a whole. Like, there's a lot of uh, big benefits to it. However, at the same time, we're putting all of our stuff in a chest, by the way, because later we can come back for it, but if we let it expire on the ground, then we can never come back for it. And now we have a hole going directly above this, although I say directly above. Clearly the mob spawner is not reached by it, so we need to now mine all of these blocks, I would say. Yeah, that's the logical next set of blocks to mine. We have to mine at least these two, so let's go do it. Let's fly up using the hole we've now made. Uh, is two fireworks enough? I sure hope it is, but I sure hope wrong. And then uh, these blocks over here, I hope are the right ones. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's these ones. So thankfully, it's just some of the staircase, which will be easy. And then all the way the rest down with this. Nice and great, nice and easy. But, um, yeah, I've come to this conclusion that, like, yeah, Minecraft is, like, not the space it once was, but there's trillions of people pouring in, um, who have, uh, you know, like, got this, like, real base level knowledge already. There's, uh, there's, like, two types of people who want to watch Minecraft videos. There's a type of person who's, like, I have seen everything, and I only want to watch a video that has everything in Minecraft, all in one video, and then I want to leave and then never watch something like that again. But, uh, and to me, that's not, like, an exciting thing. Like, I, I personally... When I, you know, like, I want to watch something in Minecraft, I want to see, like, an aspect of the game fully fleshed out. But there's also a second type of the, uh, viewer who is not, like, I just want to watch an everything video uh, all in one place. Uh, you know, like, I, I want to see someone start Minecraft and go all the way to having more stuff than I'll ever have. Which, you know, I see the appeal to it, don't get me wrong. But um, there's also a second type of viewer who's like, yeah, I, I am getting back into Minecraft or I'm even starting playing for the first time. What do I actually do? It seems confusing. And I feel like that is a type of viewer that I would love uh, to, like, you know, help out on the channel. I, I mentioned before, I love to help people out. And uh, the sort of person who's looking for new stuff and doesn't really know what to find, that is the type of viewer I'd really like to find. And then also, hopefully, at the same time, have the sort of, you know, I, I always like to make videos that I would like to watch. When you're doing anything in life and you're not sure who you should, who you should make it for, the easiest rule is, like, well, people like you. The type of person you know best are people who are like you because you are like you. Uh, I hope you're like you. <laughs> if you're not, I, I'm not sure uh, what to say to that necessarily. But um, you, you know you the best, and so you know what you want, and people like you want the best. And so it's the easiest market to target solely because of that. Uh, you you know you, and so you know what you want. And uh, I know that I would love to see like a deep dive into certain items and some of the weird things about them. So, for example, um, did you know there is a uh, a potion of decaying exclusive to Bedrock, or did you know that there, there was a different style of brewing that Minecraft Bedrock was going to have, but they changed it at the last minute? So I figured, why not make like an ultimate guide, not just for old players, uh, you know, not for just people who already know the mechanic, but for new, or other people who don't know the mechanic, but for new players and old players alike. For everyone to be able to learn something from, I, I feel like that is a good goal for a series. Like, have a series of guides uh, that are so good that everyone will learn something. And so the ultimate guide is goal aiming to do precisely that. I know there's going to be some pedants who comment, I knew everything about Minecraft ever, but I guarantee 99% of people who watch it will learn something new about about the game. To me, that is the goal. Like, I should learn something while researching the video 
that I had no clue about before. That's how I like make it exciting for me. And so the ultimate guide is my big plan for what I'm gonna do over this next week. I think um, this is something that is like very important to me. Uh, doing something that can bring you know, together people who want to learn about the game from scratch, together with people who already know about the game and will think they know everything about the game and can be pleasantly surprised. To me, that's the fun thing. You ever watch a tutorial, you know, you ever watch something about something you already know just to be like, yeah, well, I know this, but let's see how it goes. And then you're kind of mind blown by something you see in there. That's always one of my favorite feelings to, to have. And so that's one of my feelings I'm going to try and create. Will I be successful? Who knows for sure. All I know is that the exact feeling I said I would get with this project of making a big lair carved out of your world, it seems so simple. It even seems tedious, right? Like just digging down endlessly, like how could that be fun? But it, in, in my mind, it always engages my, uh, my brain in a way that just allows it to think like, okay, now I've got all these blocks. I can make something weird out of these. Like I've got a chest load of weird kind of stone blaze box. It, it could be fun to do like a random, uh, you know, RNG style build, like type, go to a random word generator and build that. Or it could be fun uh, to extend this hole and make like a big set of stairs down and up it. It could be fun to actually, yeah, work on that. Like uh, there's, a, there's a lot more exciting uh, staircases than this basic one I made. Um, you know, if your brain doesn't start whirring when you're doing big destruction projects, then uh, I guess we have different brains. But this is one of the most important and most fun things to me, and that's why it's the one I wanted to share last, and it's the one I wanted to use as, like, kind of my opportunity to be like, yeah, this is, um, th this, this is fun in a way that is cathartic and genuinely is uh, a type of art, right? Like, there's uh, there's two ways you can do art in the real world. You can do art in positive space, i.e. by, you know, painting something or whatever, but destruction is a type of art. You're just, you're just drawing in the negative space. In the, you know, if you think about it this way, right? Like, if you have a white canvas and you start drawing black lines on it, you are still making art even, or you have a black canvas, it's 100% colored in with ink, and then you start rubbing out some of the ink to make white lines. That is still the same as doing art, just in reverse, or as people like to call it, negative space. And uh, I think this is like such an interesting concept, and it exists everywhere, and it's something you can choose to do, or you can choose not to do. Ultimately, like with anything in life, there is no one who can tell you what you can and cannot do, uh, except for this guy who will hit you with his uh, stuff if not. But yeah, now we have this whole thing going on down here, which is fun because I can now take some cobblestone, I think I got 13 of it that I'll have to do. Uh, we could take some cobblestone, um, which I'm going to do. And now we're going to make the rest of this, because you can see here, this is obviously made of cobblestone and a little bit of uh, mossy cobblestone. But just by taking a few cobblestone blocks, we can now go all the way to the surface with them. And we can do something, hopefully, kind of fun, and make some, uh, just a few cobble blocks here and there, just as an indication, there's a mob spawner down there. I think it's actually going to be hard to dig any more of this because of where it's located. But just a few blocks here and there, so three more there, and then three more over here. Um, just a few blocks here and there have really resulted in what is looking like nothing on the surface besides a bit of light. But when you look down it, you see, oh dear god, that goes all the way to a minus 50 <laughs> mob spawner. That's over a hundred blocks of tunnels that we just did right now. There is no doubt I made my world a slightly more interesting place, and hopefully that's something you can do with yours, or indeed the real world. Whichever one, I hope you all enjoyed this particular Let's Play. Um, every single Monday I go and and dive into my 11 year old survival. It's 11, it's 11 years old, uh, by the way, in October. I'm excited for that. But my 10, uh, my 10 year and uh, 10 and a half month old survival, sorry to lie to you. And uh, yeah, if you wanna see my adventures throughout the updates, make sure you subscribe or check out the playlist. We recently sorted through the playlist, so you should be able to actually see them all. It's exciting, but you know what's exciting? If the creeper blows me up with this capon, is that a hate crime? Okay, goodbye.